Last time on the Back 40, Doug Duren showed up with some new trees and real equipment and did his best to help Mark finish up the summer work on the property. Now that Mark learned how to drive a skid steer, it's time to tackle the very tricky ratchet strap and instruction manual to get the final prep done for deer season. Here I am, uh, stepping six-point buck on November 7th. I'm beginning to think I'm a little different. Outside of a relatively small community of deer hunters who can relate, I know my fixation with whitetail seems absurd. I study deer pictures like I'm preparing for the SAT. I look at more aerial maps than flight control. I sometimes sit 20 feet up in a tree for 12 hours straight for 20 or more days in a row. Maybe strangest of all, I name bucks. Bucks I aim to kill. It's a hard one to explain to those normal folks out there that name dogs and cats they intend to keep alive, but trust me, there's a certain practicality to it. That's why I'm so happy to have Tony Peterson here this week to scout and prep the farm for deer season. I don't have to explain this stuff to him. He's just as obsessed as I am. As a longtime whitetail nut, outdoor writer, and DIY bow hunter, Tony's the perfect guy to help with these final projects and to join me in November for a hunt during the whitetail rut. So first up, Tony and I are heading out for an evening scouting session to hopefully lay eyes on some back 40 deer. Does, fawns, or bucks, I really don't care. This is what I live for. Do you have any of those people? Anybody who's like that who just think you're just over the top weird? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. I only have like three friends. That's because I, I get free hunting stuff. But yeah. I'm not I'm not like super neurotic that way as much like scent and stuff like that. I'm pretty bad. But like just thinking about it and looking at Onyx like Oh maps all the time, right? Yeah, and just like Getting, you know, get a picture of a, you know, a big one in one place, and then, you know, I've been seeing some good ones by some public I hunt in Wisconsin, and just like knowing they're there and thinking about like, okay, it's only 10 days, 15 days, 20 days, whatever, and it's just like, it's all I want to talk about, <laughs> and my wife's like, I don't give a shit about deer. Okay, have you gotten this one? Where you're laying in bed, and you're on your phone looking at your maps, thinking about those things, studying it, marking waypoints. And then you get the slap. <laughs> Just turn that thing off. It's too yeah. bright. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, at least. Oh, dude. My wife hates me at night these days. <laughs> at least twice a week, I just get up and I leave her to sleep and I go look at aerial photos. <laughs> Stupid. You know what? It is nice to be around someone who gets it. <laughs> it's really nice to be with someone. Yeah. You just get me, Tony. Yeah. I can relate. <laughs> I'm out here with like Steve. All he wants to do is talk about squirrels. I'm out here with Yanni. I'm trying to be careful with my scent control. We're checking trail cameras two weeks before our blue day. And I've sprayed some scent with my spray on my cameras after touching it. And all I do is laugh at touching it. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> it might be pointless I'm at this point. I'm sorry to laugh, but holy shit. At me. I just, I just don't get it. Yeah, I see them. They're not looking at us, I know. There's a doe in the bottom walking up towards us. And this is 64 acres, yep. right? 64 acres. Um, and if you remember when we were looking, studying the maps and stuff, yep. like 30 acres are these old fields like this. Yep. Um, and then going this way, it drops down into this deep swamp. In these fence rows, you've got a lot of cherry. There's some maple. 
there's a good amount of oak. And I'm thinking while I'm showing you around, there's, I don't know, four or five cameras out. I thought we'd uh -huh. grab SD cards, take a look at those. Summer trail cam pictures are what set the stage and expectations for the rest of the year. Last season's results were awfully disappointing. So this year we've widened the net. I've got seven cameras spread out across the farm at this moment, either on the outside edge of bedding areas or near summer food sources. So other than the one cell cam I've got going, I don't know what's running around out here. So I'm very, very interested to see what we got. Mm -hmm. And I would tell you, don't come to this hunt with your Minnesota, Iowa glasses on. Realize I, I already that. told you, all your up-and-comers are in danger, Mark. <laughs> well, as long as those are the expectations you have, then we're, we're in good yeah. shape. Yeah, I'll put it back in. <laughs> Alright, man. Now the uh, moment of truth. How excited are you? I'm not as excited as I am on some car pulls because yeah. last year I was here with Steve doing this. And I was very excited, and we went through like 10,000 pictures and not a single buck older than a year and a half old. <laughs> well, that's as far as we guys when it comes to deer. Mark, you, Mark, Mark. So like, how, if you had to rate how depressed you are on a one to ten, <laughs> what would you rate yourself? So ten is really depressed. Ten is like yeah, catatonic. <laughs> Getting ready to jump off the ledge. Yeah, yeah. No, like a seven. Seven. <laughs> you're, just, you're taking this hard. Mm -hmm. So today I'm going to have low expectations and hopefully be pleasantly surprised. So we're going to find out what we have to hunt. That's, that's what we're going to be doing right now. First picture's a buck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not a jumbo buck, but a buck. He looks like a Michigan shooter to me, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a, he's a nice, like, a two-year-old pry for around here. Yeah, I mean, he's got some purling on the bases. It's like a nice two-year-old. Hey, he's not a bad deer at all. Right there, our very first picture. That's already better than the entire poll of Steve last year. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're a better guest than Steve, I'd say. Well, Although, obviously, he's, he's, well, he's, he's well, coming you, back. But <laughs> yeah, but you got a rifle hunter there. Yeah, that's I mean. true. Here we go. Ooh. What is this? Hmm. That's a nice deer. This is a nice deer. Look, he's looking that same. Are you sniffing the same thing? What's Whoa. going on there? That's a sweet buck. Yeah, it is. That's a good one. Wow. Cool. Is, is that is that like a little dropper he's coming got off? Something funky going on. Yeah, it's like does, a little mini he? drop time. Oh, this is that uh, yep. wonky side of the one. I can't believe how much I we're getting. I mean, I nicknamed that one Spencer because it's like just a little off every time you look at it. <laughs> if you've never met my partner in crime, Spencer Newharth, you're missing out. He's just a different kind of guy. Deep voice, loves hot tubs, collects rocks, lives for deer. Hey, Spencer Newharth, how's it going? Spencer it is. <laughs> do you do the name thing back home very often? No. See, I... I used to do it all the time because it was like this fun thing that like everyone did that I wanted to be like. Mm -hmm. And then it just became like a practicality. Yeah. Like I talk about these deer so often yeah. now that it would be really difficult to be in a conversation about a deer that I have to talk about like 15 times a week and be like, hey, you know that one big eight point that's on the 40 acre property on the west side of the state that yeah. also has a weird thing in his ear? We got some stuff to hunt. Yeah. Spencer, the weird buck, <laughs> and then there's the droppy the time buck. Grub. So yeah, I think there's the the Spencer buck. I would think I would strongly consider shooting him. Mm -hmm. The droppy time buck. Yep. He's a strong contender, and that big eight for sure. Yep. I mean, there's a three. And that goofball. The goofball. The one with the messed up side. Oh, I thought he was the Spencer buck. I thought Spencer was the wonky one. Oh. The other wonky one. Oh, yeah, there's two wonky ones. <laughs> well, then, yeah, wonky one and Spencer. Spencer Sr., Spencer Jr. Uh-huh. That's not bad. I mean, I hate to have to get right into it, but we've got to go and, I think, do some scouting, try to get a couple of those ladder stands up. Not sure. necessarily for us, but I want to put a few ladder stands up for 
uh, some guest hunters coming later this season after us, and then maybe scout a few places for the two of us. And then finally, as much as we can, I've got some big tower blinds that are gonna be a bear, but I wanna place a couple of those because my dad's gonna come out for a hunt. Mm -hmm. And I think that'd be a really good situation for him being an elevated blind. Sure. Um, so what I'm trying to say is I wanna put you to work. And no, milk, I, milk you. Believe me, I know exactly why I'm here. <laughs> After hunting and scouting the farm over the last year, one new location stood out as needing a stand. At the far north edge of the back 40, the swamp squeezes down to its narrowest point between two of our old fields. Along the west edge is a well-used doe bedding area, and to the northeast is a neighboring cornfield. In short, we've got a unique set of terrain features here that ought to funnel a lot of buck movement through this one small spot, which is also right in between doe bedding and feeding areas. It's a surefire recipe for the rut, and a perfect place for Tony and I to sit, or one of the new hunters joining me later in the year. It's a stupid place to put a ladder stand, Tony. Yep. <laughs> Whose idea was this? <laughs> Spencer. This is, uh, you know when you get into a place and you're in some spots, like, oh, this is a nice spot, we'll put a stand here. Oh, this could be, a, you can sit here, observe. And then you get in that other zone where you have that feeling, you're like, ooh, this is where you kill something. Yeah. This is where you kill something. Yeah. What about this one? Do you think this is going to go? We need more like about there, probably. Let's see if that'll hold. All right. <laughs> no. No hiding that. OK, so the way these things work is we okay. begin by removing the long straps from the ground level ratchets. Are these supposed if, to come all the way out? We'll thread them through again when it's all done. Okay, we gotta get our little stabilizer bar. Why is it? We start pulling this. I think I gotta throw this over here. Very nice, just perfect dainty toss. Thank you. That's what I perfected in baseball. I'm I'm like the least mechanically inclined person. Oh geez, when we're like, doomed for the rest of the day. Yeah. If that's the case. When you hand me a ratchet strap, if it comes apart, there's like a 40% chance I'll be able to get it back <laughs> together. I've never met anyone worse than me. Come on. You're already making me feel better about my ratchet skills. Good. What I'm trying to do, what I what I try to do with all of our guests out here is make them feel really comfortable. I provide them ample confidence by showing them that they can't look worse than the guy hosting the show. Yeah, I'm already doing like back ass words. Yeah, you gotta come in behind this yeah. right here. So yeah. <laughs> See how mine is right here? Yeah. Doesn't seem. No, no, you gotta just, you gotta just pull it straight down through here, buddy. And then watch, it'll tighten up. See it this? is tightened up. It's working. I know, but you've got 300 feet of slack here. <laughs> That's what I was doing this whole time, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Stand, you can sit, whatever you want. Hey Tony, do you want me to come down there and show you to do that? <laughs> hey man, payback. 
Well, to be f this is like uh, the biggest branch in ever tried to cut with a pole saw. <laughs> this is looking good now. Yeah, you like I it? can, I can see it playing out just perfect. After last year's hunt with my dad, I knew that our setup in Field 4 had to change. The habitat on the neighboring property made this an area of opportunity with good bedding areas to our north and east, but we needed to give deer a better reason to come to our side. The hope here now is that the switchgrass, sorghum, and trees we planted this summer will give deer a greater sense of security, and the expanded food plot will be enticing enough to bring them into range. The plan is to set an elevated blind just to the east of the plot where the usual winds should blow our scent away from incoming deer while also giving my dad and our other guests a much better view. Supposedly nobody hunts this property next door. Mm -hmm. It's just a little sanctuary of sorts that I'm hoping we'll catch something coming out of. I'm not gonna lie, putting all this together is kind of a pain in the ass, but kind of, kind of. <laughs> I do think that when it's all said and done, it's just gonna be such a cool situation. You know, in, in, at least here in the immediate future, this is where I wanna set my dad up. Yeah. And he came out here last fall and he has a, a pretty significant visual impairment. So it's just hard for him to see stuff from deep in the timber and the brush, but get him 10 feet up high and looking down these fields, he's gonna be able to see deer. And honestly, that's just enough that he'll be thrilled. I mean, he didn't even just shoot anything. If we see some deer from an elevated position like that, he's gonna be tickled. Yep. And he's yeah. gonna see him in here. This place is cool. Yeah. I'm just, I'm excited. So much of my hunting, like you too, I'm sure, is, is like me focused, right? We spend weeks and weeks all over the country chasing them and it's get my buck. Uh, I'm glad that I've kind of been put in a situation now where I can focus on somebody else. Yeah. I gotta believe the same thing with your daughter. It's exactly right? the same thing. I've spent way more time setting them up for turkeys and deer this year than myself. And it's it's worth it though, right? Yeah. It's, it's so a cool. lot of work, but it's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, I can't I just can't wait to see the expression on his face when that first deer comes in. And if it's a spike, whether it's a spike or a 170 inch five year old buck, I bet you the expression is gonna be the same thing. Bark, bark, there's deer, there's deer. He's gonna be so excited. That's awesome. This right here. So this, it's got me a little bit nervous, but I, I've got the can amp set up back there. The winch is attached. So I'm gonna stand the can am and I'm just gonna slowly bring it in as you walk it up, right? Yep. And then when, it, when we get to the point where it's gonna tip over, I'm a little worried about that, when it's gonna tip forward, that it doesn't have too much momentum and tip onto me. So I don't know how to deal with that, but. I hope Papa Ken Kenyon uh, appreciates this. I hope so too. <laughs> I hope so too. All right, let's try it, buddy. All right, here we go. I know. I'm just gonna let you do the lifting. I'll pull it slack. Yeah. How you doing? Keep going. Holy shit. How is this not gonna come flying forward? God, this is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. A little more. So if you come over, I think you should come over here and we should try to walk it over maybe. Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, close. Come on. Keep going. We're good. And here we go. Here we go. Oh. You ready? Yep. One, two, three. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I think it's time for the moment of truth. Yeah, you better get up there. See, uh, see if it looks as good as I think it's gonna. 
And here it is. This is pretty sweet. Is it? Yeah. Can you, you see the corners? You can, can see you everything. Really? Everything that I wanted to see. But you can see this front edge awesome. You can see into that timber really well. Mm -hmm. You can see down to this corner great. And you can shoot all the way there. This back corner too. It's a great vantage point. This is nice. Yeah. This is gonna be so perfect for my dad. He's gonna... Yeah, those windows for a crossbow are nice. Yeah. I can see it now. Oh, my dad right here. I'll be just to the right. We're gonna be talking about something. He's probably gonna be talking too loud, so I kinda of have to give him the nudge and say, shh, we're hunting. And then, nice. We'll give him a three-year-old 10-pointer. Nice. He's gonna step out down at the corner. He's gonna walk down, and just when he turns, my dad's gonna see him. He's like, oh, oh, Mark, that's a good one. That's a good one. I'm gonna shoot that one, Mark. I'm gonna shoot that one. He's gonna keep on walking right up here. He's gonna be angling towards the food plot. He'll set his crossbow right here. I'll stop him for him. I'll go, Mrah! and then right there. Beautiful red blood. Oh yeah, look at that.